In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this interactive pop-up modal in Framer. And the best part is we're gonna connect it to the Framer CMS so you can have even more control. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Framer and what we wanna do is when someone clicks on this share button, we want to open a modal. So to do this, what we're gonna do is select that frame, which is this icon here and we're gonna click on overlay. And now we've essentially set up a trigger. So when someone clicks on that, it pops up this overlay. Now there's a few things going on. As you can see, uh, this kind of overlay is over the top of some items, but not the other. And that's because these items here, like the header and these images here, actually have a Z index applied on the canvas. So all we need to do is increase this until we cover the entire viewpoint. Great, that looks awesome. So let's just test that out quickly. So let's go done. Let's click on play. And when I go down here, click on that, it opens my modal. And when I click on it again, it disappears. So what we're gonna do is we're going to open that modal again. And now we're going to design our modal. So in this case, what we're gonna do is drag in a frame, which is just gonna sit in the middle. Let's make sure we have auto layout selected. Uh, now to do this, you'll notice if I actually click on my overlay, I really don't have much control over the actual functionality of the styling. So to get around this, all I need to do is create a frame, which is essentially going to be the container. And it's going to essentially be the exact same of this overlay here. So what I'm gonna do is set the width to be 100% and the height to be 100%. And we wanna go back to our overlay layer and make sure that this is centered as much as possible. Right, so if we make sure that's aligned. Great. Just make sure that width is set correctly. Awesome, so now it's taking up 100% width and height of the frame that it's in. So now I can actually drag in another frame and now I can actually have the ability to set an auto layout here and stack everything to the center. So let's go ahead and let's design our modal. Now, in this instance, I'm actually using a CMS for this page here. All these images are hooked up to CMS. This text here is hooked up to CMS. Uh, so there's a lot of data we can actually play with within this overlay. So with that in mind, what I'm gonna do is just start to build out uh, this pop-up. So we're gonna have a white circle here, the width can be 320 pixels, the height can be, yeah, 400. Looks like we want a bit of a radius, so let's do that. Let's go 40. Great, that looks pretty good. Actually, we've probably taken it too far. It's the little things, am I right? All right, so now that we've got this, it looks like we want to add in a frame, and this is going to be our preview image for the actual uh, item itself so let's just go in and let's just add any sort of image from unsplash for now and again this will just be a placeholder i'm going to connect it to cms later on great and let's just size that up to where we want it to be and let's just preview this just to make sure it's not too small so when you click on this it'll come up with this modal here which i think looks like a pretty decent size okay great now let's go through and finish designing the rest of the modal. So I'm actually just gonna cheat here and copy some styling that I've already got sort of like set up here. And so let's just copy that. Let's go back into my modal and let's paste some text. Now it looks like if we drag this across here so we can see all our frames, Looks like that's sitting uh, underneath this image here. And that's because we don't actually have a layout selected on what we'll actually call our modal. So let's fix that. And now let's go in and add this. Now, what I actually wanna do is make this image not have any padding. So similar to like what it was before, we want it to take up the full width and a fixed amount of height. But for this text here, we actually want some spacing around the edge because if it doesn't have any padding, it's probably gonna look a lot like this. And we don't really want that. We can want everything to kind of be aligned properly to the left, but at the same time, we want a little bit of spacing. So to achieve this, what we're actually gonna do is wrap this text within another frame. So if we grab this text layer, put it in a new frame, and now if we set the width of this to be 100%, so it's taking up 100% width of the frame that it's in. And if we set the height to be fill, which means it's going to take up as much space as it has available, 
now we can actually have more control around this spacing here. So I actually like the idea of it being centered. So let's keep it centered. Uh, let's disconnect that from the content for now. Let's call it uh, product title. And let's change this style and let's make it a bit smaller. So let's make it, uh, I don't know, maybe 16 pixels. And we want this to be a different color text. So let's grab that color from my Figma document which is already in here and we'll do that. All right, let's fix up this color here because it's annoying me already. Great, and now I can have a second text here which says share this product with a friend. Cool, and let's size this up. Great, now it looks like we've got a bit of an overflow issue. So to fix this, all I'm gonna do is set the width of this to not be auto, but to be 100%. So then it's being contained to the frame that it's in. And now we still have this issue where everything's getting pushed right to the edge. So to fix this, we are actually going to add some padding so we can actually add a little bit of breathing room around the edges. So let's try 20 pixels, maybe 25. That looks great. So now, there's actually this kind of gap around the ed edges, as you can see, of 25 pixels. Now, the last part of this functionality that I wanna do with this modal is actually have a copy button that links to the URL of this website. So to do this, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to search for copy and grab this copy to clipboard element. Now, this is really powerful because what I can do is set it so when someone clicks on this button, actually copies anything to their clipboard. This can be text, this can be a link, can be whatever I want. So just for this instance, we're gonna just change this to say copy. Uh, we're gonna change the fonts to whatever font we're using, which is Poppins. So let's change this and let's search for Poppins. And maybe we make this a little bit bolder too. We'll bring the size down. And I think there's just too much padding going on. So we'll kind of fix that up a little bit. And just like the rest of our design, uh, if we go back just an instance here, like we've got these rounded buttons. So we're gonna make sure that that's consistent. So if we click on that overlay again, now we've got this copy button and we're just gonna change it. So that's that. And we use this like a lime color, this accent green for the copy button. Great. I think that looks pretty good. I think the only other thing that I would want to do is uh, just add a little bit more padding uh, to the left and the right. So if we make this say 20 and make this 22 and let's make this 10 and 10 just cause it feels a little bit bulky at the moment. Yeah, that's already feeling much better. Now, the other thing, if uh, we look at the initial design is uh, we want to add a uh, preview for this button that we're actually copying. So this was a little bit different in terms of how we're gonna build it. So essentially what I'm gonna do is draw in a new frame here. And we're gonna make sure that this is actually containing my copy button. And let's just go ahead and fix the layout options here. And let's change the width to say 200 pixels for now. We'll change this later on. Uh, but for now, I just wanna contain this element within its own frame because alongside it, I actually want to give it another frame. And this is going to be where I actually store the preview. So you can see it's not exactly right, but if we go back to that parent frame that both those elements are in, and if we set the width to be auto, it's automatically gonna take up the desired space that we want. I'm also gonna set the height of this to be 100%, which means it's gonna take up 100% of the content that's here. So that means everything aligns really well. We'll get rid of that background color. And now we just wanna style this. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna add a radius as high as possible. Uh, I'm gonna add like an accent gray. Uh, so it's very subtle, but like it's still sort of there. And now I'm actually gonna go through and add my text. So let's just go ahead here and let's firstly bring that a bit closer. Uh, I still feel like there's a little bit too much height going on, but I think that'll be okay. Maybe if we extend the width a bit, that'll be okay. And let's go ahead and add some text. And this is going to be our preview. So it might say shop.framer.io forward slash product forward slash test, whatever the URL is gonna be that someone copies. And now we're just going to go back to our styling and we're going to uh, click on layout so we can center that. 
and we want it to start, well, at the start. Uh, so we want to do that. And then this text is way, way too big. So let's bring this down to be 13 pixels, for example. Maybe we go 14. And we want a little bit of padding still. So let's add some padding of about 10 pixels. And let's just fix this text here as well. So we're going to make it our font of poppins. And let's go a lighter gray. Now, this kind of works, but I actually want it so you can, when you click on this button here, you can either copy like that, uh, just like that, or you can kind of select all this. But as you'll notice, I can't actually scroll and see the rest of my text. So to fix this, what we're going to do is go in here and we're going to go to overflow and we're going to set the overflow to scroll, which means if there's any sort of hidden section here, we can actually set the property so we can actually scroll the rest of that section. So when I hover this and scroll, you'll see I now have the functionality to see the whole text. Okay, we're pretty close. So the only other thing I wanna do is actually change the spacing here. Uh, so these are close together like they were, these two texts here, but this is a little bit further down. So by default, because these are inside the same frame, they're automatically got the same gap. So to get around this, what we're gonna do is draw a new frame and we're going to select it just over the text. And we're gonna make sure that both text elements are within that frame. Let's set the layout to be uh, stack and we're gonna set the width and height to be auto. So we're not really changing any sort of like styling properties. Let's get rid of that background color. And now because these are contained within their own frame, we can customize the gap between these two elements. And because these are now treated as separate frames and there's one big frame here and one big frame here, you can actually set the gap of this to be completely different. So now we have even more control over how this styling of this text fits. Okay, so let's preview that click quickly. So if we press on done, press on this uh, icon here, comes up with the modal, great. Now you notice, I'm trying to click, I can't close it. I got this copy button, which we'll link to CMS shortly, but I need this modal to close as well. So let's go back into the modal. And the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of this uh, background fill that we set before on our container that was covering everything. Great, and now we're going to add a new interaction. And this interaction is going to be on that initial container that we set up, which is the first sort of layer or frame underneath the actual overlay itself. And we're gonna set up an interaction. And when someone interacts with that layer, so when they actually click on it, it's going to close the overlay. And we're gonna make it so it happens instantly. So now if I click on this and click on this, you'll notice no matter where I click, it's going to disappear. But the problem with this is that this modal here is part of that frame. So like, how do we actually get around this? If I, want, if I have an interactive element here, how am I gonna make this work? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to select this frame and let's make our layers a little bit more clear. So we're gonna select this modal that I have here and we're going to set the positioning to absolute, which means now it's not actually uh, distinctively relying on the property of the frame that it's in. It's kind of got its own sort of frame properties that it's going to rely on. And we'll go down and we'll just set the Z index to be a little higher. So now if I actually click on preview and click on this share icon, you'll notice I can interact with this. All right, so I figured out the issue. Uh, so the same thing, we just need the absolute uh, positioning to be applied. But the problem is it's still contained within this frame. So if we just kind of drag this up to be its own separate thing, then this way uh, you'll notice that we have this background, which is uh, set to be whatever we want. And then we have the modal separately. And this is gonna stay in the center always because we actually have the positioning set to uh, or pinned to the center. So now if we go back into preview, if we click on share, you'll notice when I interact with this modal, it's like its own separate layer. And it's not actually, uh, you know, uh, editing or uh, touching this background image here. But when I actually click on this, you'll notice it will disappear. So this way we can actually achieve the functionality that we want to create a pop-up modal that works. 
Okay, so next we want to connect this content to my CMS. So it actually shows what the product title is, shows an image and changes this text here along with the copy button. So this is really easy to do. All we need to do is go into our overlay and select the element that we want to be a variable with our CMS. So you'll notice on the things that we can make variables, we've got this little plus icon in the styles panel here. So when I click on this, I can set a variable and I'm gonna set this to whatever CMS item I have set up. So if I set it to the thumbnail photo, it'll automatically change to this product here. I can do the same with the product title. So if I go into content, set variable, and we're gonna set it to title. Now, what I'm gonna do with this one is actually set it to the slug and the slug of the URL is essentially just that second part of the uh, domain. So it's like, you know, mywebsite.com forward slash, and then what's after the forward slash is the slug. Now you'll notice it doesn't show the whole website. So to get around this, <clears throat> sorry. So, so to get around this, what I need to do is actually copy this twice. And we're actually going to set the layout to uh, be horizontal. And we're going to reduce this spacing a bit. And on this first element here, we're actually going to remove the slug and we're just going to set this to be whatever my URL is. So now this way, it's kind of just setting up what I need it to. And we can go ahead and we can make the distribution to the start. So now it works in the exact same way. So this first instance here, this kind of shop, dot framer.io is always set, but the slug will be different depending on what we're talking about. Now, the other way to do this, which I would recommend if you want a copy button, is to actually have a separate field within your CMS here. And if we go in here, we can add an extra field and we're just going to call this URL. So we'll call it shareable URL. And maybe we put some tracking on this. It's completely up to us. Uh, but this way we can actually copy the whole URL and post it in. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, it's the same effect. So if we go back to our CMS uh, within this item here, if we go down to the shareable URL and we call this uh, framer.io forward slash shop forward slash the ID, which might be Google Pixel. Now, if I go back, uh, I can actually set this content to be the shareable URL and it will work exactly like we suppose. And then again, for the copy button, it's the same thing. We, for the content, we want to set the variable to be the shareable URL. So when I actually click on this copy button, it's now copying to my clipboard and let's test it out. It's now copying to my clipboard exactly what that content is. So in a nutshell, that's how you create a modal in Framer. The only other thing that I would recommend doing is setting a little bit of an animation for when this modal actually appears. So what I'm gonna do is select the modal frame and to set an effect. And I'm gonna set the effect to be appear. And it's going to be when uh, on appear, so when it actually shows, it's going to slide in from the bottom. So we're gonna make it so it goes uh, from 100 Y axes and we're gonna make the stiffness 150. So it's pretty smooth. And we're also gonna set an out state as well, which won't really matter too much, but we'll just make sure that that's applied. So when I click on share, you'll notice it fades in really nicely. And when I click out, it also fades out and rinse and repeat. And again, we've still got the same functionality. So everything's connected to CMS. And when I click on that copy button, it actually copy the text that we've set. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more Framer content. I also have a ultimate Framer course of Flux Academy, which covers the A to Z of mastering Framer. And I put out a ton of new content and products for the Framer community. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, feel free to check some of the links down below. If not, that's totally cool too. Uh, and I really hope that you found this video useful. Uh, and until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.